Hey, what's up everyone? Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection and welcome to your supplemental video for lesson number 13. It's going to be all about compressors. I want to show you how to work with compressors in Pro Tools, so let's go ahead and start by firing up Pro Tools. Open up a previous session and we'll begin there. Alright guys, so hopefully you have a Pro Tools session fired up. If not, don't worry, just go ahead and watch this follow along that way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up a compressor. So I went to my insert, going down to multi-channel, going down to dynamics, down to compressor limiter, We'll go ahead and click that, and here we're looking at our compressor. Now this is out of the DigiRack compressor. It says compressor limiter. Compressors and limiters are very similar, okay? But we're going to really go over compressors and uh, the function of this particular compressor right here. Now the first starting point when you work with compressor is the threshold. Now what the threshold is, is basically the sound level that you need to reach before everything else is activated, okay? In this case, its default is negative 24 dB. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move this over to negative 30 dB. Oops. Oop, there we go. Ah. It's a little tricky. Okay, cool. So we're looking at negative 30 dB. And it's like saying before anything happens, before I'm actually activated and I'm awake and everything else is actually working, a sound needs to reach negative 30 dB. Okay, so that's what the threshold is. Now, the other functions will actually be activated once the sound reaches negative 30 dB, the dB. And what we're looking at next is something called a knee. Now what the knee is, is like exactly how aggressive is the compressor actually going to be activated at. So once it's activated, how, how aggressive is this uh, compressor going to be? Is it going to be very uh, gentle or is it going to be aggressive? And you can actually tell how aggressive and how gentle it is by looking at this graph. As you can see right now at uh, 0 dB, it's pretty aggressive. Okay. But if I move the knee over to a higher dB, you'll see how it gets more rounded, a little bit more gentle. Okay. Now, the reason why you would want to have a knee more gentle or less gentle would be depending on what type of instrument you are using this compressor for. A higher knee might be better for, let's say, something snappy or, or, or quick uh, sounds like uh, staccato notes or maybe like uh, drum hits, something that happens really quick. Okay, You might want to have a more aggressive knee. Now something that you might want to have a, a more gentle knee or a softer knee might be something like a vocals or a bass line or a piano that's playing very uh, smoothly and slowly. Okay, that's what the knee is. It's exactly how aggressive or gentle this threshold will be, or not this threshold, this compressor will be. Now next in the fire line is the attack. Now what the attack is is exactly how quick is this compressor going to be activated once a sound reaches the threshold. Okay, so once it reaches 30 decibels, how quickly is uh, the compressor going to be reacting to that? Okay, now the quicker you have it might be, again, for something like drums. You know, you might want to have a quicker attack. And then if you have something like a voice or stringed instruments or something that's more smooth and legato, long sustaining notes, you might want to go ahead and adjust your tack to be a little bit longer, you know, maybe around here, 20, you know, 20 or so milliseconds, okay? The next in the operation of what a compressor is, is something called the release. Now the release is kind of like the reverse of what the attack is. The attack is like saying, okay, this is how quickly I'm going to activate once the sound actually reaches the threshold. Now what the release does is the exact kind of opposite of that. It's like, how long am I going to be in use for before I shut off? Okay, now sometimes you want to have a, a longer release depending on what type of instrument, uh, even up to seconds and, and you know sometimes you know quicker than that depending on what type of instruments. You know, right around uh, you know a quicker release might be for something again like drums and it would work also for anything that's uh, fast playing notes, like staccato notes again. And a longer release might be for stringed instruments, voices, bass, uh, things that are happening a little bit slower and smoother. Okay? So that's pretty much what the function of the release is. It's like, how long is this going to be uh, activated for before I shut this down? Okay? Now next what you have is something called the ratio. Now what the ratio is, is this kind of gets a little bit a little bit confusing, but what the ratio is is saying like, okay, so exactly once the sound reaches the threshold, how much am I going to lower the sound by? 
A lot of people don't understand that compressors, what they do is they compress sound. They actually make it lower. They don't make it higher. It only becomes higher after the fact once it reaches the gain, which I'm going to get to. Uh, essentially, what the, what the ratio is saying is, okay, so if we're a 3 to 1 ratio, the moment a sound reaches negative 3D, I'm going to lower it, or actually, let's say a negative 29 dB, which is 1 decibel higher than negative 30 dB. The moment it reaches 1 decibel higher, I'm going to lower it down by 3 decibels, which is going to be negative 33 dB. Okay, so that's what it's doing. It's actually lowering the sound. So if something reaches 30 decibels, or let's say negative 29 decibels, it's going to lower it by 3, 3 decibels, okay, which would be negative 33 dB. Now, once you start using the ratio and everything in tandem together at the same time, you're going to be losing a little bit of sound, but there's always a way that you can gain that sound back with using this gain, this gain uh, knob right here. So if you lost 3 decibels and you want to go ahead and, and regain them, then you just go ahead and move the gain to 3 decibels. You usually only want to go ahead and replace what you lost. You never want to go ahead and, and go much higher than that. In fact, in sometimes in most cases, you will just, you know, not even change it and adjust the rest of your mix according to, you know, your new change with your compressor, okay? Because once you start bringing up the gain, essentially what ends up happening is all the sound, sounds that were lower have been risen up, and there's no more dynamics. Essentially, there's no crescendos. There's no, you know, uh, there's no changes in, in how the dynamic of the sound is. You know, if it gets a little bit, if it's softer and it gets louder and louder and louder, uh, you, don't, you don't notice that difference once you start messing with the gain and even compressors as a whole. So when you're doing all these steps, you know, you never want to be like, oh, let me go ahead and move the threshold all crazy over here or like that and, uh, and, and do things very uh, roughly. You want to go ahead and, and listen to the sound, listen to, the, to whatever sound that you're, you're compressing and slowly ease into it until you get to that point where you like it. You kind of cozy into it. And then you, you move over to the next parameter and you slowly kind of ease on into it. And that's the way you would work a compressor, especially this is the way you would work the compressor in Pro Tools. Alright guys, that's all the lesson detail I have for you for right now, but of course there's plenty more videos coming along in the future, so look out for those. And remember to always try to find more information about your lessons online. And while you're online, don't forget to check out Music is My Oxygen for all the things that you care about in the world of music. And until next time, have fun, study hard, and keep your eyes on your goals. I'll catch you guys on the next video.